Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion. Today's a special day. Let's start off by offering a greeting about our heavenly parents and true parents. Chonjin Chamonimke Kyombe Baro. And now to lead us through the family pledge, I'd like to invite our Reverend Mohan Stevens. Hajong Meng Se, Il, Chaneo Guk Juin. 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 본향 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 창건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천혜국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 찬여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천혜어극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천혜어극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천혜어국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 찬여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 찬여국 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you very much, Reverend Nohan. And now to open us up in prayer, I'd like to invite up Reverend Shimio, Dr. Shimio. Father of the Lord, today I'm going to be the morning devotion. Heavenly parent, thank you, thank you so much for this great time for the morning devotion conducted by Dr. Yon, our beloved Continental Director of North America. This morning again, we really want to be humble so that we may be able to really receive your word, your direction. Heavenly parent, we need your input constantly because we have to really restore everything in the past through indemnity. In the past history, we have continuously been against you and your will. As we know from the human history, a lot of tragic things happened Rebellion on the part of humanity happened against you. Heavenly Parent, we really want to completely sacrifice ourselves and deny ourselves so 
or the past may be liberated so your heart of Han may be liberated. We really want to show you our utmost level of fear of piety. So all the past history may be indemnified. And I, we really want to do that only because we knew that you are a God of love, our true parent. Heavenly parent, thank you so much again for this morning devotion. Please be with us. We will try our best to be with you at this time. And, and I want to offer this prayer in the names of Theodore and Samia Shimio, a blessed gender family. Aju. Aju. Oh, Dr. Shimio Sensei. Kamsamida. Handsome man and beautiful lady. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Shimio, for opening us up in prayer. Brothers and sisters, on to our appreciation points. Uh, please take the next few minutes to share anything you're grateful for. Today is Thanksgiving, so if you've been skipping out on this, please take today to at least share anything that you're thankful for in your life. We'll see you all in a few minutes.
welcome back everyone yeah just just like maybe I anticipated and luckily yeah, most people joined the the gratitude uh sharing today so i'm happy we all did maybe let's do this more often <laughs> uh i had the opportunity to be with the laurent couple from ohio and eva from from maryland i'd like to first call on the laurent couple uh, piero and gloria laurent to share with us their gratitude points this morning uh thank you as fred uh it's a pleasure to be uh, in the zoom with you this morning for the first time uh thanksgiving has always been my favorite uh, not one of my favorite holiday but i always enjoy it uh, my favorite holidays are christmas and new year's uh during the thanksgiving i remember living in connecticut where i spent a good deal of time with families because most of my relatives live uh in the east coast especially in new york connecticut Massachusetts, New Jersey, uh, now uh, North Carolina and Florida. So it's always good to meet them all and spend the time with them and so forth. But now since I have my own family, uh, we've been spending time together here in Ohio. I have my wife, Gloria, and my daughter, Precious. Uh, so Thanksgiving has been special uh, to me. That's my gratitude for today. Thank you. <laughs> good morning. Brothers and sisters, good morning, Dr. Young. Good morning, yes. Happy to see you in Kentucky last Saturday. Yeah, thank you. My gratefulness, as I shared a while ago, is our freedom in celebrating Thanksgiving. And also I'm grateful for those who founded this kind of Thanksgiving, because without them in history, I think we cannot celebrate Thanksgiving in this nation because this is because of their faith to God. We can celebrate Thanksgiving in spite of their suffering. They really let, they leave their nation to come to America to find God. So that's why we are celebrating Thanksgiving, the Beertans history. So I'm saying that I'm grateful for this country because this nation is really blessed by God. We can connect state by state in this nation, very strong connection, go beyond, you know. So I'm grateful for that. And we can exercise our freedom of religion. That's why, that's what I share today because mm -hmm. this is simple gratitude because I'm not from this nation. But celebrating Thanksgiving and saying thank you to Heavenly Parents, to God, mm. for this day that there is really freedom of mm. religion in this nation is really wow. mm. great for me. Thank, so thank you, you so your, much. Thank you for your beautiful sharing, our oh, Gloria and then Pierrot. Pierrot, your bold, today your bold hair, uh, the bold hair is a. Uh, Really shining. Wow, really. Baby Gloria, love you so much. My brother senses a letter thanks to Heavenly Father first and true parents, our ancestors, our own parents, our own uh, relatives and brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laurent couple, for sharing with us your gratitude. Next, uh, actually, saw a very familiar profile picture as people were led into the 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 all too familiar from our sub-regional directors and secretary general meeting she's got paling <laughs> if you could share with us your gratitude points this morning wow you you Rachel, fred you know my heart just now i thought about her i'm happy <laughs> to see her face Awesome. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Rose Fred. Um, yeah, I was I usually it'll be through Zoom or, or uh, through the Facebook or so I was like, okay, Thanksgiving, I should go on the Zoom with everybody else. So ah, great. Um <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, you know, I've been thinking about this question for Thanksgiving, right? Like, you know, what am I most appreciative? And uh, I, I obviously I'm very appreciative of our, you know, God's parents, our families, the community. Um, but for me, I'm really grateful that every day I'm given an opportunity to make a difference, you know, make a difference in um, my community. Yeah, I'm, I'm secretary general for the Midwest, so I can make a difference there. I can make a difference 
Um, I'm staffing the 24 plus retreat coming up. I can make a difference there. I can make a difference in my own family. I have three children and um, that being given that opportunity every morning to make that a new difference. Um, that for me, I feel like I'm really grateful. I'm given that opportunity. And I also want to give a little shout out to my husband, you know, being, I mean, everyone knows if you're in a leadership position in our movement, we're always doing stuff. We're moving and it, it's, it's all in town those, right. All of a sudden, like, you got to do this, you got to do that. And so I'll be like, you know, to my husband, be like, I got to meet, I got something going on soon. Uh, you know, and we have three kids. My youngest is almost three months. So it's, it's a busy household. So I just want to give a special shout out to him. He does a lot to me uh, for our family. So anyways, thank you, everyone. Thank you. She's got paneling about how about new, your new baby? Is the baby okay, healthy? Yeah, she is happy. So this, this worked out really well. She's not crying. <laughs> it's good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I really appreciate Especially your family, your family is very special. Your brother, Chris and David, everybody join always morning devotion. Such a dedicated family, beautiful family. One of the exemplary family. Thank you so much, Pelling. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, lots of Canadians, uh, morning devotion. Maybe I should call Dr. Moon Shik Kim to pray today. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, uh, what you all came for, uh, Dr. Young's morning devotion. Let's open our hearts, open our minds to receive our heavenly inspiration today through our beloved Dr. Chung Shik Young. Good morning. Good morning. My dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace, 안녕하십니까? Happy Thanksgiving Day. I hope you have a beautiful time with your family. Today, I'd like to speak with the title, The Course Toward a Heavenly Unified World from the Contents through Mother's Memoir. So, uh, let's uh, read. I'd, I'd like to invite Heavenly Honey, please. Then, on December 28th, 2019, at the culmination of my 40-day Cosmic Canaan course for the firm establishment of Chanoguk, clergy gathered from all over the world to establish the World Clergy Leadership Conference, WCLC. At this point, I realized that even if the entire sky were paper and all the seas were ink, there would not be enough to record this tearful course. We all overcame physical limits and continued on, even when we felt we might collapse. It was a victorious course through which our hopes and desires were fulfilled. At long last, the era of the heavenly nation and heavenly continent has arrived in providential history. Every nation and continent has its unique path of restoration. The first seven nations to complete their path did so during the seven year course after True Father's holy ascension in 2012. God recreated these seven nations as heavenly nations. On the foundation of, of the substantial victory of seven heavenly nations and a heavenly continent, we have come to the historic day when, filled with determination, we can set out to reach the final objective of our journey, which is a heavenly unified world. The United States is a Christian nation on a spirit-led continent. Let me explain about its course toward becoming a heavenly nation. The path of Christianity and the United States are entwined. The Roman Empire legalized Christianity in 313 CE. From the Italian peninsula, Christianity leaped across the European continent to the British Isles, where it grew strong. But over the next millennia, Britain lost the ability to practice Jesus' teachings to love your neighbor as yourself. She placed the monarch as ruler of the church and created a state monopoly on religion. 
By the 17th century, Great Britain was gaining power, but it was suppressing many sincere followers of Jesus. God's providence could no longer develop there, and it moved west with the Puritans who braved the treacherous ocean in search of religious freedom. The United States we see today was born of these sacrificial Christians. As I already discussed, in July 1984, the U.S. government sent Father Moon to prison, as was the case in both North Korea and South Korea decades before. This was a story of communists and unknowing Christians finding common purpose in opposing God's work through true parents. Fortunately, many fair-minded American Christians and political leaders, also from the left and right, spoke out against Father Moon's imprisonment. Some ministers marched in protest and set up makeshift jail cells behind the White House. People of virtue within the American government, media, and clergy decried Father Moon's imprisonment as a blatant assault on religious freedom. In the three years following Father Moon's release from Danbury, we sponsored 7,000 members of the clergy to travel to Korea and Japan for the Advanced Interdenominational Conference for Clergy. The next year, ACLC organized the 50-state We Will Stand speaking tour, in which my husband and I declared in church after church the truth of Jesus and true parents. On the foundation of these and more works over the following decade, at a major ACLC meeting in Las Vegas 2015, I proclaimed for the first time, I have come as the only begotten daughter for God and humankind. Let's realize God's will together. The ministers welcomed my words with cheers. Why have we not known of this truth until now, some of them said. Why has this obvious fact never crossed our minds? Thank you, Heavenly Honey. Today, uh, let us study through Mother's speech, WCLC inauguration. <laughs> so uh, this was the December 28, 2019. Please. I want to believe in you. Members of the clergy who have gathered here from all over the world in particular. You are the righteous people prepared by heaven in this age. What is the mission of righteous people? You should be able to embrace the nation and the world with true love, living for the sake of others, instead of living only for yourself. This is what the true mother, the only begotten daughter is doing. I am guiding fallen people to become heavenly parents' children through the blessing. You must know that this has been the long-awaited hope and dream of humankind for 6,000 years, and it is also our heavenly parents' desire. True mother, the only begotten daughter, is guiding a new era and a new providence. This is the seventh year of Chanukuk. Now you must take the lead. When we think of the 7.6 billion people of the world, we cannot turn a blind eye to the children whom the heavenly parent wants to embrace. I sincerely hope that you become the righteous people, clergymen and clergywomen, and leaders who can guide people to become heavenly parents' children in the shortest possible time. In so doing, Please remember that the founding of the World Clergy Leadership Conference, which will bring your individual foundations into unity, is the way to realize Heavenly Parents' dream and humankind's hope in the shortest time. I pray that you will all become the righteous people and clergy standing in the vanguard, and that you will not look back, but run forward. Okay, uh, let us study today and uh, the day after tomorrow more about the mother's speech and then 
True Mother's uh, the content from the True Mother's memoir. Living divine principle, dual characteristics of internal nature and external form. We call internal dual, internal nature is sangsang. And external form is a hyongsang. The principle of creation. Please read. There is another pair of dual characteristics in reciprocal relationship, which is even more fundamental to existence. Every entity possesses both an outer form and an inner quality. The visible outer form resembles the invisible inner quality. The inner quality, though invisible, possesses a certain structure which is manifested visibly in the particular outer form. The inner quality is called internal nature, and the outer form or shape is called external form. Since internal nature and external form refer to corresponding inner and outer aspects of the same entity, the external form may also be understood as a second internal nature. Therefore, the internal nature and external form together constitute dual characteristics. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. More fundamentally, however, every entity possesses both an outer form and an inner quality. The visible outer form resembles the invisible inner quality. The inner quality is called internal nature, and the uh, outer form is called external form. Based on this uh, EDP content, I'd like to uh, share some uh, content. Visible human beings are beings that resemble the nature of the invisible God. To study God's invisible nature, you can find out by observing the 12 representative types of humans. And if you want to love God, you need to be able to love all of the 12 representative types of human beings. So you can become a good person and become like God. Just as a year has four seasons, and 12 months, there are four types of the people in human world, and more specifically, 12 types of people. Jacob had 12 sons, uh, and then Jesus had 12 disciples, centering on true parents. There were 12 disciples representing all the Testament age, 12 disciples representing in the New Testament age, and 12 disciples representing the representing the complete testament age. It was because they were types of people that represented, represent the very human race. The four methods of the research humans are men of heart and uh, believers and uh, melancholic and then hologmatic hole, uh, temperament. We can, uh, you know, many people are, uh, you know, judged based upon these four kinds of the character. It is possible to know a person, Song Sang, by looking at his external appearance, Hyung Sang, using the, you know, uh, physiognomy. Etc. This is possible because a person's body resembles his mind. Thus, by researching his body, it is possible to discover the world of the mind. Heavenly Honey, please read about the Father's work based on this uh, EDP content. A person with large extremities. People with large extremities have to suffer a lot. What do you say when someone has big feet? Thief. If you have big feet, they say you have the feet of a thief. Naturally, you must walk around a lot. You must walk a lot. 
In order to have a stable life, you must walk a lot. We can know just by looking at the feet. Those who have to work a lot have big hands. It was made that way. People like me become experts on this topic. I know just by looking. Ah, that person, he suffered and did a lot of rough work. It is easy to know that that person goes to a village, catches and eats a cow, and feels good when drinking a glass of alcohol. That is why when I match you, I look at all these things. Therefore, if I received 100 million won per pair, how rich would Korea become? Uh, yeah, thank you. You know, my hand is very kind of normal. However, my feet is quite big. Uh, not so big, but just a little bit bigger than normal people. Then I realized that I need to work hard. I need to go every part of the world. I understand to the Father's word, this is really my destiny. And then when I look back at my life, really, really I go everywhere. Not just only sit down on the chair in front of the table. I'd like to visit the members. I'd like to visit the country to country, village to village. Then I understand through the Father's word, God already know my destiny. I need to work very hard. Uh, nine times of the wisdom for knowing people. Have any honey, please. Confucius has said, in general, people's minds are rougher than mountains and streams and harder to know than the heavens. In the heavens, there are the seasons of spring, summer, fall, and winter as well as the, the distinction of morning and evening. But a person's face and deep emotions make it hard to know them. True Father said that he studied for many, many years to judge people. And because True Father loves that person, he knows the spiritual background of that person better than anyone else. The reason we study people is that each person has a different personality. So in order to form a good relationship with that person, we need to know the other person very well. The reason to study a person is not to judge and utilize that person. And also not being deceived by others is not the main purpose. The reason to study people is to help them more and to love them more because each person have the different character, very unique character. You know, to relate to them very well, I need to research, I need to study, how can I love more, more? How can I help them more? How can I live for them more? This is the main purpose. Many people just using the external way to judge here and there that is not so great. We must read the mind of others carefully. We must read each other's mind carefully, both between husband and wife, between parents and children, and between siblings. You know, to do that, you need to know through the inner mind and then out the appearance as well. Don't judge people easily. If you always live for others, with a parent and heart and love, you will come to know people. Many people say how to know the people. There are many types of the wisdom for knowing people. I can learn, I can study all kinds of things. Do you know what is my conclusion? What is the best, best way to know people? That was my conclusion after researching and study this and that. Even father particularly study, you know, to know someone's character through external appearance. But this is my own testimony. 
to my brothers and sisters. What is the best way to know the people? No matter what, what kind of person you are, you are cold guy, warm guy, kind guy, no, no, not much kind guy, that's not right. What's the best way to know the people? When you truly serving someone with a parental heart, this is the best way to know the people. Second, when you love someone truly, truly, truly beyond any preconception, any nationality, any kind of a, a philosophy, national boundaries, you need to love someone with your almost sincerity. Even though someone misuses you, misuse you cheat you, sometimes hurt you. But when you have that kind of loving heart, this is the best way to know someone's character. When, when, when you truly serving someone and you know what kind of person he is, how can I deal with them? How can I love them? We can know that. I learn from our true parents. Even though he studied externally, but most important thing is our internal attitude. Wisdom for knowing people, a person whose appearance seems honest but has a sly mind. Do you understand sly? Sly means kind of a cunning. And those who appear to be adult but are bad inside. Those who appear to be easygoing, but are people of integrity. Those who appear to be hardworking, but are actually lazy. Those who appear to be generous, but are impatient. In addition, those who seek justice, but run to drink water to uh, quench their desires, abandon justice when a hot fire difficult situation approaches. When, when a virtuous person is a higher than someone, what kind of person should I hire? You know, according to the standard of the virtuous person, it's also very many people are using this method. He sent them on a far away errand to observe their loyalty, observe their respect from close up, assign a complicated task to see their capability, ask a question out of the blue to see their wisdom, make an urgent appointment to see their credibility, entrust of a position to see their uh, benevolence tells them about the crisis to see their integrity, makes them drunk and, and see their moderation, put them with the opposite sex to observe their behavior. When putting these nine results together, it is possible to investigate uh, people and we, we can we can learn something, my brothers and sisters. I can share more about tomorrow. Today's uh, youth ministry, the correct uh, understanding of value of pain, very important content. The correct understanding of value of pain. In the Bible, there is no mention of God's heart and pain for Jesus when he died on the cross. When Jesus died, external occurrences, such as the sun losing its light and also quake are nothing. When God saw his only begotten son, whom he sent after 4,000 years, die without achieving the will 
his heart in a world would have been a state of dying. You know, many people talking about Jesus Christ. Many people sympathize about Jesus Christ. Many people crying and shed tears when we look at the Jesus suffering and his cross. But nobody, no ministers talking about God's heart and pain for Jesus when he died on the cross. Can you imagine that? Heavenly Father, how long he waited for sending the, his begotten son to the, world, to the world. According to Bible history, God waited for 6,000 years, uh, 4,000 years. I think more, much, much, much more than that. Waited and waited and waited and waited. And finally, Heavenly Parents said, He's the only begotten son to the earth. However, because there is no foundation for him to survive. Many people do not believe in him, persecute him, hurt him, and finally crucified. When Heavenly Father look at this kind of the situation, when his only begotten son he was the Messiah. He is God's only begotten son, God's direct lineage. When Heavenly Father see his only begotten son, he prepared for 4,000 years, but he died on the cross, bleeding from his head, bleeding from, from two hands, bleeding from two legs, bleeding from his chest. Oh my God. Can you imagine God's pain? God's sorrow? God's heart and God's pain is more greater than Jesus. Can you imagine about that? How much he's wailing and wailing and wailing and wailing and wailing. Bible do not mention anything about God's pain about that. Wow. However, our true father discovered God's such a Miserable situation and heart. This is a really great point. <laughs> then what was God's heart pain? Like when Adam fell. The Bible does not specifically mention this part. When he lost Adam, he only begot the son. <coughs> 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 When he lost Adam, his only begotten son, God's universe must have been dark. The fact that the sun could not shine means that God could not shine his light. And he entered the middle of the total darkness. There was no peace and joy, and there was only wailing. Can you imagine? Bible <laughs> did not mention properly. God's tears, God's sorrow, God's pain. When we just read the, the, the Bible in Genesis, just one of the story. But Father, this is a cover. God's pain and sorrow through Adam's family. That's why we need to understand correctly what the, what the meaning of the pain. Why human beings need to go through that kind of pain and hardships. That's why when we clearly understand God's pain and God's heart, then we can understand everything. 
How did Abraham overcome his three major pains? He did not fall into a dark place. However, rather overcame to the center of his home. That is Abraham's great point. God relieved the heart, worried the heart, and desired to praise would have been there. Bible, Genesis chapter 22, verse 11 to 12. When Abraham and tried to offer his only begotten son, Isaac, to the heaven. Only son, not begotten, only son to the heaven. And then when he really want to kill his son, then angel appear on behalf of God. But the Lord's angel shouted from the heaven, Abraham, Abraham. And then Abraham said, here I am. He answered, don't hold the boy or him, him in any way, the angel said. Now I know. You know, the Lord's angel said, now I know. Now I know that you truly obey God because you were willing to offer him your only son. The moment of successful sacrifice of Isaac was the moment of eternal parent to try relationship between God and Abraham. It was the moment when all the pain turned into hope. This is the point. If a suffering finishes a suffering, then that's the problem. You know, all the pain turn into the hope. That is the point, my brothers and sisters. Why Abraham was great? Not just only his suffering, not just only he overcame, all his pain turned into the hope. The path of faith we walk on always repeats the pain and temptation. This is because temptation comes after winning over pain and pain comes after winning over temptation. This road arises like water on our uh, path of faith. When pain passes, a temptation comes. And when temptation passes, it is a pain that comes again. Then why does this temptation and pain come and over and over again. Through these pains and temptation, there is, a, there is an aim for me to grow and inherit the love that can become one with the heavenly parents. Therefore, we must correctly grasp the value of and cope with the pain that comes to us. This is very important meaning. My brother said, what's the, what's the purpose of the pain? Why the uh, pain and, and the temptation come to me oh, all the time? What's the main reason? Very clearly mentioned here. Let me grow up. Let me inherit God's love. Let me build up the relationship between God and myself. Become more, closer, and closer. When we deal with the pain, it's often easy to get tired. If we think that pain is atonement for my sins, even if we think pain is a separation, it is difficult to overcome. However, 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 If I grow through the and bear the pain in order to establish a parent and child relationship with the heavenly parents and true parents, my filial piety will spring up and my love will be more abundant. Victory over suffering becomes an opportunity to establish parent and child relationship 
like God and Abraham. When Abraham overcome his pain through the offering his only son Isaac, when he got a victorious condition through the overcoming his pain, that was the moment to build parent and child relationship between God and himself. Jesus established eternal value by winning over the suffering of cross, the cross with the love. At the same time, on the foundation of victory of the physical and spiritual world, he made the achievement that all human beings can benefit from spiritual salvation. Although external and physical pain Jesus suffered was beyond imagination, internally the pain transcended into a pain that gave hope to mankind. Therefore, it became hope for all mankind. Our Jesus, when he crucified on the cross, he overcame everything by true love. Even he forgave his enemy and still pray for all God. Bible did not mention clearly, but he worried about God's will. If I die, Heavenly Father need to wait another 2,000 years, another, you know, need to send another message. He worry about God. He worry about God. But with, he overcame with that kind of filial piety and heart. And then even forgiving his enemy at the end. Wow, that was really great condition. Great condition for him to resurrect and give incredible hope to all humankind. He overcame the painless by his love. That's why Jesus was the champion of true love. Therefore, although we are suffering externally, we should be able to have a faith that this moment is a hopeful moment. Do you think that when you face some difficulties and suffering, really hard as it, then do you think that this moment is a really hopeful moment? Abraham overcame. Jesus overcame. When you got a victory condition through the overcoming the pain, that moment was really hopeful moment. Whether you reach disappointment or hope after suffering depends on whether you believe or distrust it. Spirit world examines believers with the test and pain. They check whether the person is really true or not, whether that person really owns his or her own life, and whether he or she is still centered on physical lineage. On the outside, Jesus Cross seems to have weakened God's ability and look like a cross of death. But on, on the inside, there was an eternal life that could save humankind. In this way, when we suffer, although we seem helpless and small and seem to suffer things, only failures of suffer. It rather becomes the place where we meet God, we can experience this through Jesus Christ. We should know that Abraham and Jesus form an inseparable relationship with God through the pain and the cross. 
and created an opportunity to receive eternal blessings. My brothers and sisters, do I see, do I see hope there in my suffering? Or do you see despair? Abraham met God through his suffering. And he also moved God and left the hope. Jesus also overcame the cross and left the hope for mankind. In pain, there is always hope. My brother says, again, I repeat again. In pain, there is always hope. God never gives pain without cause. Therefore, believe that this pain is to give me hope. Believe that this pain is a pain to meet God. Believe that this pain is for me to grow. When suffering ends only for suffering, it is despair, so I am a failure. Therefore, we must be victorious in any situation, believing that suffering is a suffering that gives, gives hope. Where there is suffering, there is a hope. Hope is waiting for me. That's why under any kind of difficult situation and hardship and pain, do not disappoint. There is a reason why God gave me this suffering. There is a reason. Ask me to grow. Ask me to build up. Eternal parents, a child relationship between God and me, like Abraham and God, like between Jesus and God, like, like between our true Father and Heavenly God. That's why today I am telling you the correct understanding of the value of pain. If we understand clearly the correct understanding of the value of pain, wow, pain is not just only pain. Suffering is not just only suffering. There is great hope, my brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Young, for giving us insight into the value of pain. Uh, when I was younger, we used to do this cadet, and he always used to say, no pain, no gain. And today, I think he said, no pain, no cause, or something like that. No pain without cause. Brothers and sisters, let's spend the next few minutes uh, just digesting what we just heard from Morning Devotion, sharing one another, and then come back to share with everyone else. We'll see you all in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. I see little palings. I see the Bowmans. I see everyone. I had a wonderful time with uh, with the Hamasaka couple and uh, Keiko Aguilar. Um, Keiko-san had so much to share. So I'd like to call on her, Keiko Aguilar, to share with us uh, her reflection, any reflection from today's morning devotion. Good morning, brother and sister. Uh, I hope I can express my gratitude by English very well, I hope. Et, uh, my takeaway is two point. First one is Dr. Yon said, the 12 type of uh, people in here. And uh, I remember 12 type of gate to enter heaven, uh, we, we have to pass. And also I feel uh, my, for me, uh, sometimes I feel uh, I, 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 I don't like these people, uh, many reflect, but uh, Dr. Yon said, uh, we have to serve parent heart to, if continue we, we do this, we can see the inside of those people and uh, we understand the, their uh, internal nature, the God gave. Mm -hmm. And if we do this, uh, we, we, we easy to understand them and then uh, we can love with a God. Mm -hmm. That's my first point. And second one is the uh, eh, eh, to, uh, God, uh, the, I feel some pain. Uh, I pass my, my uh, past and I feel the uh, my painful situation always uh, I uh, like dark and damp the I feel sometimes inside uh, like a, inside like a dark a deep pond long time and then I couldn't I couldn't uh, I, I, I cry many times, just a long time. Uh, and then I feel the Heavenly Father, if I, uh, he saw me, uh, he, I feel so bad, he cried together with me. And then he feel so bad for me. Oh, right. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so bad for Every father, but uh, this era, uh, Doctor Yo, he told us if we gratitude and and also that my situation is uh, many my feeling came to my ancestor and a lot of uh, spiritual spiritual people couldn't pass the uh, this feeling uh, but uh, if I can gratitude I can thank, thank for those people uh, watch me and oh oh she she did she she good she, she thanks even we cannot and then they can liberate this is at least I can uh, part of gut pain I can uh, overcome and then mm -hmm. uh, I can give hope for God mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, the painful situation change to hope. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, my takeaway is this two points today. Thank you so much. 
Wow, thank you so much, Keiko san, your you know sharing. Thank you so much. Kamsamida, Keiko san. Kamsamida. Thank you, Keiko san, for such a deep sharing. Next, I'd like to call on uh, also from looks like headquarters staff are all here today. Sunmi Or, Sunmi Or, to share with us her reflection from today's morning devotion. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so I have a true confession. This is my first day joining live. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> and I got in a breakout room with Dr. Young, so that's fun. Um, <laughs> um, no, but it's really great to see everybody. I'm getting messages from my South Carolina crew. Hi, everybody, where I grew up. Uh, yeah, I got caught. Um, so we had a wonderful brother as well. I believe his name is William. Uh, from Jamaica who shared very deeply. And uh, so I feel a little guilty for being the one to share. He had some great points. Um, uh, yeah, honestly, Dr. Young asked what inspired me to join this morning. I said divine intervention or something, you know, I woke up at 6 a.m. was like, oh, I should I should just join you know, my housemate, Sunwa Reiner. She's been joining for 40 days straight as a condition. And uh, so, I don't know, I just felt inspired. And it was interesting. I think God needed to tell me this message about like suffering and pain is not just suffering and pain. It There's hope but on the other side. And um, I think for a lot of, <laughs> you know, Shizuka works with, you know, the 24 plus staff and everything. For especially for older sisters, you know, who have uh, broken blessings and we're still looking to build a family, it can be really painful to go through those processes to try to find someone. And it feels really painful. And like, you know, why do I have to suffer so much for something that's, you know, God wants as well. Um, but, you know, what comforts me is that, you know, God's always there with me. And I was reminded of this the other day, like, whatever suffering I'm feeling like God feels that a million billion times over and has, you know, like, uh, and especially lately I've been praying to heavenly mother and there's a comfort and an embrace that comes when you pray to heavenly mother. Um, it's a much more quiet, uh, less, uh, loud, <laughs> I guess, voice. It's more of a feeling. Mm. more embracing mm. more embracing yeah beautiful yeah. Wow. some me i hope you <laughs> join very often not sometimes okay <laughs> thank you I got so caught much. out so <laughs> thank you some me i'm so glad to see you some me for yeah for sharing with us uh, your reflection this is really moving Brothers and sisters, um, on to our announcements. Today is a special day. That's right. Today, uh, first and foremost, let me get this right. There we go. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you've all ready. I know some of the people I work with had to prepare the whole week just for today. So I'd just like to acknowledge that we know today's Thanksgiving, wherever you are. Happy Thanksgiving. Also, if you're feeling uh, inspired, please feel free to, to invite people to join in this morning devotion experience. We had some people join for the first times, and uh, it's, 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 it's great. It's an immersive experience. The video quality is better. The audio is better. Everything is just better. You get to see the screen every time. So you can join this by going to edu.familyfed.org, edu.familyfed.org. You also get to see babies on the screen every time I see a little turkey head um, on the little paling brother there. <laughs> also... If you're feeling especially inspired, there'll be a link in the chat to give, to donate, to support Morning Devotion Ministry. Yeah, it's a time of of mer it's a time of thanksgiving. So if you like to thank Dr. Young or thank you know this Morning Devotion Ministry, feel free to just click that link there. If you're online, just go to edu.familyfed.org or just check the description on YouTube or Facebook. There should be a link there to be able to donate to support this ministry. And now on to our musical offering. Today is uh today's special and just as uh as special as, as it is, we have a special musical offering from Heavenly USA, Heavenly USA from Atlanta. So take it away. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good morning, families around the world. Good morning from Atlanta, Georgia. We are here. 
in Atlanta and uh, today is a special day today is Thanksgiving where we give uh, where we give praise and honor to our heavenly parent so today we have a special song it's called be blessed so we want to sing to you and we love you and let's sing thank you, thank you. 